Good evening, my name is Melissa Jackson and I am your co-host. Welcome to the all new Express Yourself Community Talk Show. I know you're thinking, just what is this show geared to be? Well, let me tell you a little about Express Yourself. This show is focused on our youth and the future. We intend to motivate and help build self-esteem so that they can become the stars which they truly are. The show will instill hope and is loaded with positive new ideas on how to go about expressing yourselves by saying and doing the right thing. We feel that we need to exchange ideas to help each other and to see the many benefits that life offers. Tonight, you will observe our guests truly expressing themselves. They will talk about how they became who they are today. And now, I would like to present to you a strong, positive young man whom you will all come to know. He is the host and producer, Mr. Vernon Richardson. Hello and welcome to Express Yourself. We as a community need to concentrate on the positive issues in our society today. We must allow positive role models, entrepreneurs of the 90s, to express themselves in a way that will encourage and capture our young audience. Now, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Keeley Thompson, the IBC Junior World Champion. Hey, champ. So, uh, tell me, uh, how did uh, your career start? Well, I started at age 12 years old uh, here in Washington, D.C. at the Latin Connection Youth Academy. Now, uh, how long have you really been affiliated with that, from childhood or, or, or teenage? Or? Well, I've been, yeah, I've been affiliated with boxing since I was 12 years old, but I've been dedicated to it for six years. So, basically, when you started the boxing career, when you start physically really getting, becoming involved in it, how did uh, your family think of your, you know, your uh, point, point of view? My, my, basically, my family wanted me to finish school, uh, <clears throat> which I did finish school. I went to college for a year and a half. Uh, so um, they wanted me to, to, to stay in school and, and to get my education. And if boxing was something I wanted to do, my family was more, they, they had just anything I wanted to do is they let me go. So I understand that uh, you come from a large uh, family somewhat? Yeah, I'm from a family of 13. Family of 13. <laughs> Uh, how did uh, you manage to become who you are today out of a family of 13? Well, uh, first of all, all my brothers were fighters, you know, amateur through the amateur career. And I learned from the mistakes that they made. So um, I came successful and hey, I am now a junior world's champion. That's wonderful. I, I, I really think that um, I know that your parents are very pleased with your success. But how are your friends now? Uh, could you tell me a little bit about your friends that <laughs> once was? What are they now? Well, I, I got friends coming from out the woodwork. They friends that went to school with me, and, and well, my friends are the guys that work with me now. And that's Kenneth Murray and, and my big brother and the rest of them. Right. Them right. are my friends. So basically, I'm not in town. I, I travel so much now, so um, <laughs> it's, I, I meet so many friends now. So, do you have uh, still that family? Support. Oh yeah, yeah. Mom and mom and daddy. Yes, sir. No matter what these. No matter what I, I do, they always with me, 100 percent. All my brothers and sisters, when I fight, they travel with me, and we go as a big family. I'm gonna probably ask you a personal question, but uh, how about the ladies? Uh, how how are they treating you now? <laughs> <laughs> the ladies. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not married. I'm young. Uh, I'm surrounded by a lot of people. I'm so surrounded. Life is that. That's the. That's something the trainers try to keep me away from ladies, you know, because, you know, and, and you know in boxing that's will be a man's weak spot, but um, I'm surrounded by a lot of ladies, you know, so. So the fight that uh, you just, your opponent, uh, Sanchez, I believe? Yeah, Richard Ch Sanchez from New York. Now, uh, how did you feel about going into that fight? Well, well, I was scheduled to fight Rafael De La Cruz from out of Rockville. He's from originally from out of New York, too. And uh, I was taking two steps. I was two steps higher when I fought Richard Sanchez, a gentleman record with 64 wins and 17 losses. So that's a that's a great record. Four for the world championship three times. And uh, I don't know, but I, I stayed in shape. And which a lot of people don't know, I was knocked down in the first round, but I came back and knocked him out in the sixth round. Yeah, the TKO. Yeah, the, TKO. The yeah. TKO knockout. Yeah. I had to I had to take your business. <laughs> All right, going back in a little the past, just a little bit more. The uh, September the eighth, you remember that ballot? 
Oh uh, yeah, well I was I knew I was the ten to one underdog when I fought for the world when I fought for the title. I fought against uh oh uh, man, Ken Hardy. He's from out of North Carolina, record nineteen to two with fourteen knockouts. So I was the underdog when I fought him and I came victorious. I beat him in a United's decision. I knocked him down in the seventh round. So So basically the past two fights you've been the underdog. Yeah, I've been the underdog. Even when I was champion, I've been the underdog, sir. But I, I like being an underdog. So you, so you really proven the media and, and everyone else wrong? Yeah, I, I, I must have did because we just had a phone call last by last week. And I'm scheduled to fight on NBC National TV in January. So, um, and I, I guess I beat the underdog against that fight too, against Juan Laporte. Right. But Juan Laporte won't go past 11. Hey, old man, he must lay. He, he must lay. <laughs> so, I mean, the self-esteem that you have within yourself, uh, where, you, where do you get it all from? Well, first of well, all, I had a strong family. I, I wasn't fortunate as most kids. My mama mm -hmm. took care of 13 kids. My mom and dad had 13 kids. And all we knew was one thing is to stay in school and get education. And something I'd done is stayed in school. I got my education. I'm going back to college because I went for a year and a half. So I'm going back to school. Um, but I'm going to finish this career. Alex, this career is kind of great. I'm going to do this about another year and a half, too. And, and I ain't trying to be greedy. Uh, <laughs> I ain't trying to be greedy, so I'm going to finish this. And I would like to appreciate to a gentleman named Earl Carwell. And um, he was basically helped me with my career. He basically started my career off. Is that the trainer? He's one of my trainers. He's a former spy partner of Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, he's, he's, the, he's one of the trainers. I have, a four, I have four trainers. Now, despite of all the four trainers that you have, who would be the most one that you would, you know, really look up to? Uh, Foss telling me something in boxing. If, right. <laughs> I hope I'm not a controversy, but I guess it would be Daryl Garner. Daryl Garner? Yeah, okay. he's a former spy, He's a former trainer of uh, Simon Brown, Maurice Blocker. Okay. He had all three of us when we came to the kids. We started together. Us three started together in the same gym. We just had a lot of controversy with the people that we was dealing with. So we went, everybody went their separate ways. But we're still friends, yeah? We still see each other and we still socialize. And time we'll be fighting up in Atlanta City on the 8th of December, we'll be going up there. So we all, you know, we So yeah. you, you, you're ready to go. You're booked up and yeah. uh, you, you have some fights in the near future. Yeah, a lot of fights, you know. And uh, <laughs> I see that um, you're motivated and you're guided in the right direction. Yeah. And with all that behind you and ahead of you, uh, how about the uh, your past tense, just a little bit about the school, your high school? How do, how, do you do anything? Do you put something back in the community? Oh, yeah, most definitely. And that's something I love to do. I went to um, high school. I went to elementary school here, too. I went to Harry Tubman Elementary, Bannock, Virginia High. I went to Cardozo High School, and I went to Catholic University in college. But um, th this is my hometown here. You know, this is my hometown. And it's something I do, I love to visit two schools and speak with the kids about drugs, education, and basically how I got started in my career, how I came successful. Now, uh, as far as the community aspects in the metropolitan area, being a role model, I mean, seriously being a role model, how can someone like you go from point A to B, from, from a school and then to professionally right into your, to, to your field? I mean, I know it's a lot not asking you a lot, but being versatile, I guess you really have to be uh, versatile in so many ways. Is that correct? Well, yeah. First, I want to say I'm, I'm from a church family. I believe in, we believe in God heavily. And God gave everyone a gift, and boxing is my gift. The same as commentating is your gift. Boxing is my gift, and it's the gift that God gave me, and I put it to effect. Now, the most common question is most asked is uh, how do you feel about drugs? Oh, um, man. Yeah. Well, they always say losers, losers use drugs and winners. It's some kind of thing, but I'm, I'm, I'm totally against drugs. The closest thing I ever took to drugs, I guess, is vitamins, vitamin C and Geraltoles. Huh? So um, I'm, I'm against drugs, and that's something I, in this city, I try to speak against. You know, every state or city I visit, I try to stop at a school or two and, and visit and speak about drugs and education, try to keep the kids on a, on, on the right track. It's hard to speak with someone uh, more my age are older, so I, catch, I try to catch the ones that's coming up right. and hopefully keep them on the right track. Right, I'm quite sure that they're inspired by your presence. Yeah. Now, how about um, your, your 
background, I mean, as far as uh, being who you are today, uh, are you going to continue to fight forever yeah. or? Oh, uh, no, 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 well, I, I think um, I'm about to make a, this is going to be a surprising thing. I'm going to, boxing is going to be about another two years for me and hopefully I can sit back and run my business. You know, I have part owner of KT Production and we, we're doing a lot of different things and, you know, I just had my mom house built and I'm going to have me one built, so that's something right. I'm doing right now. Well, this concludes the first segment of Express Yourself. Go to work in bands because they love me, huh? Oh, they have thousands of dollars van pulling, so they can pay for my college. Oh, and they can buy me nice things too, like what? Like going go. Wow, they do van pull because they love me. Call Prince George's Ride Finders one eight hundred four eight six ride. Please stop crying. Well, all of my friends drink. You know, it's not like we get drunk or anything. We just like to have a good time. Get off my back! Don't you think you're making a big deal out of this? I don't have the problem. You have the problem. No more drinking. Stop crying! I probably since the last time. You've tried everything. Nothing's worked. Maybe you walked out of your purse. Maybe you lost it. Don't go accusing me. But there is hope. Get through to us at the National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, and we'll help you get through to them, just as we've helped thousands of others. Just don't give up. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? HIV and AIDS. Man, I'm tired of hearing about it. Like, I really have to worry about it. I don't do drugs, and I wouldn't sleep with anybody I didn't know. There's no way I could get HIV. I swear, if I see one more thing about HIV, I think I'm gonna die. You could be putting yourself at risk. Call 1-800-342-AIDS. Hello and welcome back to Express Yourself. For those who are just tuning in, my guest, Mr. Keeley Thompson, the IBC World Champion. Mr. Thompson, where were you born and raised? Well, I'm originally from the South. I was born and raised in Greenwood, South Carolina. And I, well, I was born in Greenwood, South Carolina. I was raised here in Washington, D.C. Now, as far as being in D.C. and being all around the drug activity, and the drug atmosphere, how have you dodged those bullets? Well, first of all, I had a, <laughs> I had a, I had a tough mom and dad, you know. Uh, they, they, they kept me going the right way when I was young. Drugs were not heavy when I was young. I mean, it was out there, but it wasn't heavy as it was now. And fortunately, I, me, myself, I think I have a strong mind, I, and I, I've done the right thing. You know, I went to school, and I stayed away from it, and people that I grew up around that was real close was into it, mm -hmm. and I just, you know, I stayed, in, I stayed in school and I kept fighting, fighting for my, fighting for my rights. Fighting my for your rights. rights, yeah. So fighting for your rights have gotten you to be one of the most successful black young men yeah. in our society today. Yes, I have. And it, it's good to say one thing. If nothing I could do for the rest of my life, I could say one thing. If I have raised kids and, and have a big family, I could say I was one of the best in the world and I've done it. And, you know, I don't, I don't, after this, I don't, I don't, I want to have a good life after this career. I want to have a, a good life. I don't. I still want to be able to continue to speak with the kids. You know, I want the kids to be able to recognize me. Was one thing. It's Keely Thompson, the champion, the gentleman that helped me. I want to be able to somebody say that to me when I get older. He helped me for doing the right thing. So, and doing the right thing has gotten you this far, and continuing doing the right thing. I'm quite sure a lot of people will respect you for that and look up to you for that. I think you have the right concept and you're truly expressing yourself. Now, as far as your future goals, I mean, say if you just get hurt this next fight, 
What are you going to do from that point? Well, first, I'm going to go see the insurance, man. <laughs> first, I'm going to see the insurance, man. So I can make sure I'll be taken care of. But what I do, I don't, I, I, I'm going back to school. Whatever happened, I'm going back to school. I'm going back to college, and I'm going to finish. I took up accounting in college, so you see, I love money. I love staying with money. Yeah, uh, so uh, <laughs> money is everything, but I love to stay with money. I'm going to go back to school, finish my career, and, and you know, and I can come successful just in, in, in Canada. I can come successful going to school. Now, say there's someone that uh, has the career mind, the boxing atmosphere that you have had in your young age, what would they do to prepare themselves? Well, first of all, boxing is, is well, if anything, it's got to have a lot of dedication. And, and boxing, and a lot of people say, but boxing is a lot of peer pressure. It's a lot of peer pressure. Uh, it's rough, and but you know I have a lot of guys work for me. A lot of people keeps me going and keeps me in the right state of mind, and and mm -hmm. and, and me myself, I you know, I talk to myself a lot, and I'm alone. I talk to myself, <laughs> make sure I stay on the right, right, right. I'm on the right on track, you know. And um, boxing has been great. Like I said, it's been great to me. Everything has been good to me. Right. And I've waited, and it's, it's just my turn now. It's your turn, it's and you're turn. taking control. Yeah, I'm taking full control of it. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Now, what do you do to prepare yourself? For a fight. Well, I get y'all. I totally run down. It's a quick run down, but it's quick a tough run down. Run down. First uh, thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. I get up five thirty, six o'clock every morning. I go running five and a half miles. I come on. I'm on the. You know, they, they put you on a special diet. I eat breakfast at seven thirty in the morning. I eat breakfast. We, we we may sit there and watch a tape or two of the right. fight. We take a we, we we take a nap to twelve in the evening. We train at twelve in the evening, and we train from twelve to four, and same routine every day. Every yeah, I think sometimes, mainly it's my condition because I have to go 10 rounds in the gym, eight, nine rounds, and with four or five different guys, you know, so them guys come in there fresh. And and that's something my trainer tell me, all the, he's a much older guy, he tell me, he say, you know, you, 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 I lose, he say, you get frustrated in the gym a lot because them mm -hmm. guys, you be trying to hurt them guys, but so who don't want to beat on the champ? <laughs> who don't go home and tell their mother, right. father, or their brother, say, man, I work with the champ, and I, got, and I beat him up. So, I, you know, it's, you know, I, I work with them guys. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to maintain that, that yeah, certain that, image yeah. and that certain I get that killer instinct when it's time to fight. <laughs> I guess that mean is that I mean, this this is what I know best. This is my job. So I have to take in number one, that's me. Now is it any special outside techniques that that you uh do before or during a fight, such as like meditation? Well, I've I have i talked to a gentleman in the back and I do I have meditate before. I have meditate and I really clear my mind. But it's something I, I love to do when I'm in training. I like to go to movies and I sit back and I relax. I like to do things that's real, real relaxing. Mm -hmm. And I hate to be alone. <laughs> I hate to be alone. And uh Well, I mean, uh basically right now you're on the road of success, so it's not too much loneliness. No, no, right? Yes, it is training. Yes, it is a long. You be you be wore out after training. You feel so tired, feel like you just. You know. But it, it's great. You know, I, I've loved. You know, you know. I, basically, I like about my careers. All the kids saying I want to be just like you. Right. I love that. You well, know. Well, what about Sugar Ray? Do you say that, or have you said that in I your past? Well, see, one of my training, Jose on Korea, used to be my one of my. I'm here training. Used to work with Sugar Ray Leonard, and his, his nickname <laughs> is Peppy. Uh, I've, I've watched Sugar Ray, but my my. My role model was, if you want to be strictly frank, it was mm -hmm. Aaron Carwell. He was a great, he was a great fighter. His career got messed up uh, through a boxing career. I mean, far as you know, he had caught an eye attack, and he couldn't fight no more. So um, he was my, my great inspiration, and, and boxing has been good. But I know Sugar Ray is one of the best in the world. He's one of the, <laughs> he's one of the best. As a matter of fact, he was at the fight down DC Convention Center Saturday that just passed. And we had to fight out of Rockville, so um, he comes on and watch me fight. He comes on and support That's me. That's great. Yeah. That's great. A supporter. Yeah. Someone to, to support you like that and give you that motivation is really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, how about uh, the aspects of your, your, your future, your next opponent? Uh, who, who will that be? Well, uh, it's a gentleman named Juan Laporte. I'm sure everybody heard of Juan Laporte. He was four-time world champion, three-time world champion. Uh, he's tough. You know, I'm fighting a tough guy. And... You know, I've, you know, he's he had few things to say. I had a few things to say, but you know, I'm champion. I'm looking forward to staying champion. I'm looking forward to being victorious. And <laughs> I expect him to say the same old thing, but everybody get a chance to see it on NBC, and everybody just, and everybody know who'll be victorious. Millions of people to see me. Okay, well, champ, uh, I've been you know sitting here admiring you, 
mind your success and how you became who you are today and accomplishing things. But one question I want to ask you, where is the belt, the number one world champion belt? Well, where is that belt? Well, I, my belt is here. Um, Kenneth Murray had it. We lost his job, so we have somebody else. Oh, okay. Somebody else got his job now, and it's here. It's yeah, let's let's take a look at the belt. And Kenneth Murray had lost his job, so this is the she's the new host, and this is my world's title here. Yeah, this is the world's title. Yeah. And you're you're wearing this, and you're wearing it proud. And yeah. for our young people out there, this is what you can accomplish by doing the right thing being around positive people, doing positive things will lead you in the right direction. Now, why are you holding this belt? I mean, I know you're proud of it. You, I mean, the, the, the expressions that, that you have just holding that belt, and it's wonderful. But let me ask you this, far as being around negative people, how do you get along with those people? type people, do you, do you kind of like uh, minus yourself from them, pull yourself away from them, discredit yeah. them? Or, or? Well, first of all, most people speak ne of negative around me. It's most people that's older than me. It's most older folks than me. And, uh, you know, I, I try to, and it's something I try to speak with the people that works with me. And, you know, I try to keep most negative things away because we are not perfect and we all make mistakes. But, um, you know, that's what they're there to do to help me when I do make a mistake right. and, and, and show me the right way. And I, don't, I just don't like negative people. I just don't like to be around negative people. Everything is, ne uh, champ, uh, you think this. And right. man, I thought I was in a funeral on the 24th. <laughs> I thought I was in a funeral on the 24th when I had a fight. And, right. And to one of the guys that been with me all my life, he said, man, this is not a funeral, man. We the champ, not this guy. So I try to keep positive things around me. Now, as far as uh, being a positive person, of course, you truly uh, is a living witness of that. Uh, how would you express yourself in your spare time, um, you know, by yourself, all alone. Yeah. Well, by myself, I'm usually with two or three people. Uh, you know, on my spare time, you know what I do? I go to the schools. I, I, I just, you know, we'll call, and I, I have my, my advisor to call the school and tell them I like to visit there. I mean, I love my kids or something else. Because when I was going to school, I ain't having one to, to come right. to schools and, and say these things to me. And, and I just don't, you know, I, I basically I try to get out there and touch them and reach them and, and tell them to do the right thing. You know. I, <clears throat> And not only because when they see me coming to schools and speak, I tell them, you don't only really have to be a fighter because you see I'm a fighter, but you can be a doctor, a lawyer, anything you want to be in the world, you can be successful at it. This thing can get your education, and that's very important. And that is a very, very... Yeah. And mainly say no to drugs. You have to see, say no to drugs. Stay a winner. You have to say no to drugs, yeah? Absolutely. You have to say no that's to drugs. That's number yeah. one. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, you have really highlighted some very good points. You have uh, come across some very good ideas for our young people. And uh, I think that they will be very impressed how you became who you are today. Just sharing this time, expressing yourself, really makes a difference to some people out here because we are around so much negative, negative negativity. Yeah. We need to come together and share some positive ideas and send out positive information, new ideas to help change some of our young people yeah. minds to get them on the right track. So now I like to say this is going to come to an end, which I dare not to say, but let me hold this belt real quickly before we close out here, because mm -hmm. this is going to be the closest I ever get to this. And uh, right now I can't even hardly pick it up, but but um, other than that, this is to express yourself. And remember, whatever you do or whoever you're with, do the right thing and you can't go wrong. Thank you.
you would like to express yourself about the show, or if you'd like to be a guest, please write to Express Yourself, P.O. Box 2337, Landover, Maryland, 20784. Express yourself, express yourself, don't give up on 